I think it goes without saying that a lot of our readers are a pay grade or two above being told how to set up their Twitter accounts securely and privately, or at least as privately as the social network allows. But the competing realities here are really twofold. On the one hand, we're all busy and securing a web account may not be on our to-do list. On the other hand, Twitter's user interface and settings options are pretty dynamic, changing several times a year at the very least. I'm in charge of social media accounts here at ThreadPost, so I try and stay on top of security and privacy settings in our various accounts just out of principle. Unfortunately, it's probably been a year or so since I really got in there and poked around. Needless to say, when I started looking through the Twitter settings to make this video, I was a bit embarrassed at some of the things I was allowing. If I were a gambling man, I bet that some of you haven't reviewed your settings in a while either. So let this be your reminder. First and foremost, let's change our password, because you never really know if your credentials have been exposed. So, log into your account and access the settings page by clicking the gear icon at the top left of the page. Click settings. Now, choose the tab on the left side of the page that says password and do just what it says. Enter your current password. Then enter a new password. It should be unique and complicated but memorable. I personally have an excellent formula for passwords. It's absolutely brilliant and I'd love to tell you about it, but it's a secret, so you'll have to come up with your own. Once you've got one, re-enter it and you should be all set. Having a good password is really the most important thing we can do. Now that we've taken care of that, let's move on to some of the finer details. In the account tab, there isn't really a whole lot going on. It's really up to you whether or not you want to check or not check either of the boxes pertaining to sensitive tweet media. More importantly though, note that this is the page where the account deactivation link lives in case you ever decide that your days of tweeting are behind you. The security and privacy page is obviously where we're going to do the bulk of our work today. For the most secure Twitter profile, you're going to want to set up some form of two-factor authentication. To do that though, we're going to have to swing over to the mobile tab. So go ahead over to the mobile tab and you can activate Twitter text messaging. So in, go ahead and enter your mobile number into the correct field and you'll be prompted to text some message to some number. I had to text to go to some number. You may have to text it to a different number. I'm not sure. Once you do that, you're going to notice that you have a number of notification options. This is totally your preference. I already get these notifications from the Twitter app itself, so I'm going to go ahead and turn them all off. But feel free to do whatever you want. You may want to get these notifications. We'll get into that in a moment, though. To be clear, just because you have the Twitter application doesn't necessarily mean that you have a mobile number linked to your account. So let's go back to the Security and Privacy tab. Now you'll be allowed to send login verification requests to the mobile device you just linked with your account. If you had the mobile app already, then you could have confirmed web logins there. But I like to keep these things separate. I feel like it's better to have one factor controlled by Twitter and another factor controlled by some outside source. I would definitely go ahead and check that second box for password resets as well. An attacker would likely need access to your email account in order to hijack your password reset in the first place, which is a pretty high bar on its own. But it can't hurt to make the bad guys input more information, even if it's something relatively simple to find, like a phone number or email address. As a point of clarification, the web login request verification is going to send you a text message whenever anyone tries to log into your Twitter account. So a lot of users aren't really interested in having this. It is, however, the most secure thing to do because you'll immediately know if someone that isn't you tries to log into your Twitter account. On to the privacy section. The most private option is to protect your tweets. And you may want to do that. We're a news publication though and we're in the business of disseminating information so protecting our tweets is a bit counterproductive. However, if you're an activist operating under the authority of an unfriendly regime, you may want to protect your tweets and be very careful about who you follow and who you let in. Particularly if Twitter is a platform for expressing your dissent. I definitely don't recommend adding locations to your tweets under any circumstance. 
I also recommend unchecking all of the following boxes. We don't want others to find us by our email address or phone number. We don't want to tailor Twitter based on recent visits to other websites, nor do we want to tailor ads based on information shared by ad partners. You definitely want to enable Do Not Track. This will make it so that Twitter does not monitor your behavior as you visit sites containing Twitter widgets and other buttons. If you don't have Do Not Track on, when you go to a website, any website that has a Twitter button on it, they could track you. Save your changes. You may be prompted to re-enter your password, which should be fairly simple, because we just changed it. We've already dealt with passwords and mobile tabs, so let's jump down to email notifications. As I said earlier, I already get all the notifications I want to receive through the Twitter app on my mobile device. I like to get some of them just to keep track of what's going on. This way, if someone hijacks the account and starts tweeting about fake pills or whatever, I'm more likely to see the unwanted content, whether it's through retweets or direct messages I get from our followers as a result. You also, you never know what you're going to get tweeted to you. I mean, Barack Obama might tweet some hot scoop at us in the middle of the night, and I want to know about that immediately. You never know. Now, the reason I opt for notifications through the Twitter app rather than via email is just the opposite of why I opt for login notifications via SMS rather than Twitter. In this case, I see no need to share the content of my tweets with my email provider if I can help it. It's up to you which notifications you want to receive and where. Whatever you decide, I do recommend not checking the box that sends a notification when someone from your address books joins Twitter. I like to try and keep those two things separate if possible. As for the profile section, I recommend keeping the bio as impersonal as possible and not really putting anything relevant in the location section. Social engineers are known to call online profiles for information before launching phishing attacks, so it's best to keep all this stuff pretty vague. I don't think that the design section has really any noticeable impact on security, but the app section is important. You'll notice that I don't have any apps attached to this account, because it's a dummy account that I created solely for the purpose of making this video. However, the first time I ventured into the app section on the ThreatPost account, I realized we had like 30 apps applied to it. I had no idea then, and I still have no idea what purpose some of these apps served. So I now keep the apps section as slim as possible. It's fairly simple. If you don't recognize it, revoke its access. We use a couple of apps to access Twitter here. Those are the only ones I allow. You want to make sure you revisit this section frequently to make sure there are no strange apps accessing your account, because this could be a sign that someone has compromised your account. We don't have any widgets set up through Twitter. I don't have any here, we don't have any on ThreatPost. This, again, is up to you, but the most secure and private option is to not have widgets at all. One last thing to consider is lists. When you make them, you should be given the option to make them private, which we recommend. That's all we have, for now at least. But as always, drop any of your own suggestions in the comments sections below, and thanks for watching.